Hello, it's a beautiful sunny morning. I'm going to try and use the chance to show you how to set a pitfall trap, which is one of the great ways of catching insects you wouldn't normally be able to find just by searching around the surface of the ground. Um, I'm going to apologise because it's a beautiful sunny morning. All of my neighbours are out and doing stuff in their gardens. You're going to have drills going off, lawnmowers, people going in and out of their sheds, all this kind of stuff. But that's probably the same sort of situation as you're going to be having when you're setting these things as well. So what I use for setting a pitfall trap, it sounds very grand, but all we're talking is a couple of cup set into the ground. Um, these are what I usually use. Um, obviously we want to try and avoid using single-use plastic as much as possible. This is a big set of cups that I bought probably eight or nine years ago and I use these quite regularly and I, and I like the foam ones because I think it keeps the insects nice and cool inside if I leave the traps out for a few days. Um, so what I've got is just normal drinks cups. You can use anything really and I've got two of them stacked together and you'll see why in a sec. Um, I've got a trowel, I've got a little bit of um, dead grass and moss. Moss is really good, um, which is going to be to keep the animals safe. I've got three very well used um, chopsticks and I've also got just a plastic top. I've got a clear plastic top here but you could just use any sort of um, um, plate or anything really. This is just to keep the rain off. So what we'll do is we'll start off here. Now I'm choosing the edge of the border here um, and the reason is that insects when they're moving along will often be using these sort of features. They'll be walking along the edge and I think if I set the trap here, I've got a better chance of catching stuff. So I'm going to go right in with a trowel. A bit like Gardner's World, isn't it? Um, and I'm not um, just digging up the soil just sort of like that. I'm actually doing a core. So I know roughly the size of the cup. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing in. You can see this. I'm pushing in the trowel like that to basically bring out, as close as I can, a complete plug of soil. And I'm going to put that really carefully next door here. So I'm aiming to disturb the area around the trap as little as possible and that means insects are more likely to move in. I'm going to keep on doing that until I've got a hole which is roughly big enough. You can see things moving around already actually. Um, big enough to hold the trap. There we go. That's big enough I think. I'm going to put that bit there. Now I've got both the cups together and you'll see why in a sec. So I'm going to put that cup inside that. We're only going to use the bottom one for the trap itself, but I'm going to keep them together because it means I'm going to have less soil going in. Now I've made that a bit too deep, so I'm going to put a little bit of soil back in. And then I'm going to sit that snugly so that the bottom, the top of the bottom cup, sits snugly with the soil surface or a little bit below. And that's really key. What you don't want is your cup sitting out of the soil because if you, if you do, you won't really catch anything. It's got like a mountain for an insect. They're not going to climb over the top to fall into your trap. It has to be sunk in. So I'm going to put that there and I'm going to use the soil, which I put carefully to one side, to backfill. Now really I want to be doing this with as little disturbance as possible. This is all falling apart a bit. So I'm just going to move it in. And you can hear the soil going into the bottom of the trap. You don't really want that. So it's firming it all around. It's nice and stable all around the trap. And now I can see that the bottom bit, the bottom, top of the bottom cup, is completely flush. And that's really important. So now what I can do is I can put my finger on the bottom bit and pull it out. And that means the cup below is beautifully flush to the surface and it hasn't got much soil in it, so it's nice and clean. I can put the rest of the soil just back here, away from the cup. So that kind of keeps it all nice and clean. Now, the second bit of kit, which I've got around here somewhere, perhaps I'm sitting on it, are these chopsticks and the, and the plate or the plastic lid, as you can see here. Now, because it might rain, and I don't want the things to um, get caught in the bottom in the water, I'm gonna use this to protect it from the rain. But first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop in this little plug vegetation nicely stuck in and that means anything that falls in has got somewhere to sit and I'm making sure I'm pushing it into the bottom so they can't just use the bits of straw to climb up so they can't escape and I'm going to use one two three oops, three chopsticks very properly to fix this bit of plate in, in place so just like that so hopefully you can see it's not too high, but it just means that the whole cup is now protected from any rain. So any insects, the idea is, as they're walking along the edge of my border here, they can fall into the trap 
and then what I can do is I can come back tomorrow morning probably the same time tomorrow and see what we've caught now you don't want to leave your insects in there for too long so probably 24 hours is really good but it means you get the whole day night cycle and you get a really good idea of everything that's moving around your garden now I've just set one here of course what you might want to do is you want to set it in different parts of your garden because there'll be completely different insects living on the edge of this flower border compared to the middle compared to under my hedge compared to under the trees or even in the middle of your lawn if you're happy to sacrifice a bit of your lawn to put in a pitfall trap and it's well worth doing this it will give you a really good idea of everything that's moving around in your garden when you can't see it so have a go at setting a pitfall trap today Hello, a little bit of a colder day today, but I'm back to empty the pitfall trap we set yesterday and to find out what mini beasts we've caught during the night and this morning. Um, and luckily my trap is still not being disturbed, which means that my four-year-old didn't spot it. And what I'm going to try and do is just gently take out the chopsticks that we use to secure the plate on top, and also just really gently ease out the trap itself. Um, when you're doing this just be careful not to get too much soil in because it can make it hard to seal the other insects that have fallen in overnight and um, this isn't a stage traps this is genuinely what I've caught so there's always a bit of um, uh, trepidation at this point to make sure we've actually got something to show you it has been very dry um, if it's dry you don't tend to get quite as much moving around which can sometimes be a bit of an issue um, to get a tap I've done it over the tray here as well you can see so that basically so I'm, I'm not going to lose anything but, and luckily I can already see Things are beginning to move around, it's moving quite fast. So just shake the vegetation so I can show you this before they all disappear. Hope you can see this. This is a um, common woodlouse moving around the edge here. So this is one of these decomposers in your garden. There'll be loads of these moving around. Um, hopefully you can see a little yellow, a, um, a black ant moving around here. This is the commonest species of um, ant in the UK. These are really, really common under patios and things. I know I get loads of these in my borders. That'll be a worker who's been walking around the surface trying to find things for the nest. And I also spotted, when I was looking, yeah, I don't know if I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little um, little black beetle here. In fact, there's a couple of them, which are rove beetles, um, staphylinids. These are very often predators. So they'll be searching over the surface for other insects to eat. And, and when I first shook out that vegetation, one of the things I saw particularly were lots of little tiny springtails, things jumping around. And these are again really important decomposers. They're incredibly numerous um, in soil surface areas or just, just below the surface. And so there's loads of those in my border. And that's good news because it presumably means that the decomposition is going on my border, which is what I want as well, providing all the nutrients for the plants and things like that. So hopefully what we've just seen, I've, just, I've not looked properly yet, but a little bit of a snapshot of some of the wide variety of different insects and other mini beasts that are walking around the surface of your garden, the surface of your borders, um, day and night. Um, and setting a pitfall trap like this is super easy to do, but it's one way you can actually meet these things. Get up close and personal and meet some of the other insects and species that share the garden with you. And hopefully we're going to be encouraging you to all go out and set some pitfall traps like this and see what you can find in your own gardens over the coming week.